Welcome to the Ferrocarta Recap, Part 6. Joining the fray, Ferrocarta slew the trolls, meeting their new acquaintances. A half-elf rogue called Alastrine, and a fire genasi sorcerer named Berlier from Frisk Stream. Seeing safety in numbers, the two joined the group. Finally making it to the church, they leave the girl in their care. Upon arriving at the estate, Ferrocarta talked with Nathaniel, and after a conversation riddled with cautious words, he agreed to help if the time arose. Leaving, the group felt he was perhaps a deceitful man, but not suspicious of being the mole. Upon their return to Sil City, they are greeted by a change of atmosphere as the streets are alive with the celebration of the Night's Fair Festival. Splitting up, half the party went to sign up for the King's Heart competition, knowing it's the best way to meet Grabnik. Given Thrisk's previous dream, the others went to find Jaren, and after an initial confrontation instigated by Alistair over Jaren's connection to Samuel Serva, they began to talk. Jaren admitted he had been following the party since their arrival, weighing them up as potential recruits for an organization known as the Drakes. He was investigating signs of demonic activity to the north, originating from an old yuan ruin called Kahatuiti. Perhaps then, it was fate and perhaps their only way to save Arya. Focusing on the current job, they met again as the competition began. Though other groups braved against beasts in the arena, another diverse party stood out, the Noon's Eclipse using magic and martial alike. Among them, Grabnik and surprisingly, Samuel Server. After tying for victory and collecting their winnings, they were invited out for celebratory drinks with Grabnik. Getting to know him over a game of cards, they concluded that he too was innocent. It was then they received an urgent message from Mayfly. Returning to him, he explained Camilla had offered a parlay, which he was keen to take up. But first, the mole. At a loss for who it could be, they pondered the evidence, finally realizing it was Bronn, the barkeep. Later that night, they met with Camilla. Mayfly led the conversation. However, Camilla revealed a secret. There was no hound. He was a ruse to keep eyes off of her, the true manipulator of the underdogs. She proclaimed that Mayfly knew her to Ferrocarda's confusion. Before things could go on, as if spurred by anger, Mayfly attacked and the battle commenced. Harnessing her natural fire magic, Camilla dealt hefty blows to the party, but ultimately fell to Gaik's arrow. But as she did, her body exploded in a fiery ball, setting the entire district ablaze. In the aftermath, Mayfly explained that a long time ago, he and other agents were sent off to capture a young sorceress. Things went wrong and the young girl burned white hot, exploding the house. There were no survivors, or so he thought. As the bells began to ring, the screams of civilians filling the air, the party set to leave the scene as the city burned.